everyone. Welcome to the Fatico Fire Company. Uh, tonight we are having a, a joint public hearing between the towns of Princeton and the town of Rotterdam. Um, let's open the Rotterdam section of the meeting. Ms. Marco, can you call the roll? Mr. Christo. Present. Mr. Gitarelli. Here. Mrs. Miller Barrera. Sure. Present. Mr. Signor. Present. And Mr. Thomas Owens Axon. First, I'd like to welcome everybody here for this uh, joint public hearing. And uh, Sammy, can you please read the roll? Councilmember Favoldi. Here. Councilmember Jack Russo. Here. Councilmember Gray. Here. Councilmember Mora. Here. Supervisor Esposito. Present. Okay. Uh, before uh, we get started, can we all stand for the invocation and the Pledge of Allegiance? Jim, can you so kind as to do the invocation? Lord Father in heaven, thank you for this opportunity to get together. These hearings are designed so that we can all have input into our town government and its operations and the operations of the fire department. We ask you to guide us in your will. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We remain sharing for the Lord. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Could we all remain together? I don't know that uh, one of our uh, state police was killed in a uh, tragic accident in Northville, and uh, I'd like to have a uh, moment of silence for him. He was John, uh, James Mon Monda, I think the way it's Monda. pronounced, Monda. Mm -hmm. He was at the Princetown Barracks for approximately 18 years, off and on. And I'd like to uh, give our condolences to his family, and I'd like to uh, have a moment of silence for him. Okay. Thank you very much. Well said, thanks. Uh, welcome, folks. Uh, the purpose of this hearing tonight, uh, brought to you again by the towns of Princeton and Rotterdam, is to discuss uh, and have, give you the ability to discuss and ask questions about the formation of a fire district here in Plotterco. Um, and we're going to go over what, what a fire district is. It's a little bit different than uh, uh, the current configuration that, that we have now, where the, where the fire company contracts with each of the towns. It would bring it more in line with uh, what the other, what everybody else in the towns of Rotterdam and, and Princeton have, which is a fire district, which is a separate self-sustaining governmental en entity under which the fire company would operate. Um, I'm an attorney, uh, cut my teeth in uh, Rotterdam at the Carmen Fire Department. I'm proud to say that big yellow fire engine out there was, uh, I, I drove it before any of you did, and I rode on the back step uh, for a number of years too, back when they used to allow that, so. Uh, let me stand over here. Actually, I can't stand over here. I can stand over here if you don't mind. Um, I can move if you do. So. Okay. Like this work. Okay. Um, right now, Plotter Kills is a fire protection district. That means that every year or every few years, it has to contract with the towns to provide fire protection. The towns are responsible for providing fire protection, and they hire Plotter Kill as a vendor if you will, to provide that protection. It's a contractual relationship between the towns and the fire department. With the formation of a fire district, the, the towns are taken out of the equation. And, it, and what would happen is it, would, it eliminates the responsibility of the towns for fire protection. And that obligation that's in the law, it's in these two towns right now, for this area, would be placed into an independent fire district. And the fire district is very much like a, a school district. It's, it's governed by uh, five commissioners, kind of like the, the, the Board of Education, they're uncompensated, and they would, they would be the governmental entity that would oversee the provision of fire protection in this area. The fire company, instead of contracting with the fire district, basically exists 
sort of like a, uh, it's almost like, a, I don't want to say parent and child, that's, uh, it's, how about a parent and an adult child uh, still living at home? Uh, <laughs> the fire district will not give a check every year to the fire company, but the fire district becomes responsible for making sure the fire company has all of the things it needs to provide fire protection. So that, that's, how the re that's basically how the relationship changes, but the, I guess the biggest benefactors are the towns because they get out of the fire business. I don't know that any of them wanted to be in it in the first place. Uh, and, and control of, of fire matic, uh, operations then comes under the a board of fire commissioners. Um, the typically, it's five, it'll be five commissioners. The, uh, the initial board will be selected by agreement between the towns. Um, there'll be, it, it's part of the going forward process. There will be names that I know the fire company is going to recommend, but it's up to the towns to select the, two, the first the initial board of fire commissioners. Um, being a fire commissioner in a brand new district is kind of like being an executor to a will. Uh, I tell people that come in, it will do their wills. Who, do, who you really don't like, okay? Because that is a lot of work involved, particularly in setting up an initial fire district. So uh, these first five commissioners have a lot of work for, uh, 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 cut out for them. After this year, they will be they will be elected annually. The, the fire district elections are in December, and there will be. Uh, in the first election, there will be five commissioners elected. They'll be elected on a kind of graduated basis. So, the following year, there'll be one elected, and then there'll be you know there'll be a five-year term, four-year term, three-year term. All it'll all work out. Everybody has a five-year term after after uh, in the in the, year, in the sixth year. So, uh, that's that's how the selection's done. People who reside in the district are allowed to vote, and typically the elections occur at the firehouse. Um, as I indicated, we don't need uh, any more contracts. There won't be any contracts. In fact, there's no provision in the law for contracts to exist between a fire company and a fire district. Um, the, the fire company will remain the same. The fire company doesn't meld into the district. The fire company retains its status as a not-for-profit corporation or not-for-profit association and works hand-in-glove with the fire district. Okay, and it's, it's, it's uh, the, the classic symbiotic relationship. They need each other. Uh, the places where there's been dysfunction, it's because they don't appreciate that the, the commissioners need to provide and, and the fire, firefighters need to show up and need to provide the labor, labor pool. In, in, in most cases, everything's work out, everything works out swimmingly well, though. So I don't want to get off the wrong foot here. Uh, why you form a fire district? Well, uh, these are the topics we're going to cover very quickly tonight. Why, how it's done, costs and benefits, the impact on the community and the impact on the fire department. Let me just dwell for a moment on impact on the community. There's not going to be any change in the way fire service is provided. If you live in this district, or you live in this area, this protection district, you dial 911, plotter pills coming along with the automatic mutual aid companies and various other companies. That's not going to change at all. The delivery of, of the services is going to change. The, 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 the way that the department functions gets toned out is not going to change at all. And that's kind of the beauty of, of where we're now. What we're talking about is really changing the administrative aspect of providing fire protection, not changing the operational side of it. But there will be, I, I submit to you, benefits that come over to the operational side, particularly for the firefighters and the chief officers and the and the civil officers in the department because in the fire company, because they will not be burdened with all of the administrative obligations they have now. Those obligations will be placed on the on, on the fire district board of fire commissioners. Why it's done, uh, fire districts provide an efficient administrative organizational structure. Basically, it's administration and governance we're talking about here. Taking out, getting rid of that contractual relationship, getting rid of the, the, the bidding and bartering that has to go on between the companies and the towns every few years, taking the whole political component out of uh, you know, town government and the fire service. Uh, and ideally, uh, and I think you probably folks are aware of it, you know, every, everybody around, in a, most everybody around here is in a fire district. Um, they, they, tend, they tend to work pretty well. Um, legal liability will shift from the towns to the Board of Fire Commissioners to the district. If the district becomes its own governmental entity, uh, the Board of Fire Commissioners becomes the authority having jurisdiction. That's significant for you firefighters because, as you know, under NFPA and OSHA and PESH and all those things, right now the towns are your authority having jurisdiction. They would probably pass out if I told them all of the things that they're responsible for that they have no idea about. That have to do with fire medic operations. So, um, and this, and that's, and I, I would say it to scare them or demean them. They've got so much other stuff on their plate that it really works to the benefit to have the fire service governed and, and run by people that can just. They don't. They don't. The board of fire commissioners doesn't have to worry if the roads are plowed or the toilets flush or there's water. Yeah, you know, all they have to worry about is the fire service, and that's that's where I think the big benefit's going to come in uh, for the fire for the fire department. 
Uh, fiscal responsibility, again, shifts from the towns to the board. The board will be responsible for levying taxes right now. It's the towns doing it uh, after a, a contract negotiation with the fire company. And then uh, lastly, fire medic operations, dispatch response are unchanged. Okay, we're gonna, it's going to be, some of you are old enough, uh, my age, I went to school one day, I came home, it was SO gas in the gas station. I went to school the next day, it said Exxon, okay? It was the same gas, it was just a different sign, okay? It's going to be just like that. It's just, there's not going to be any change in what goes on there. It's, it's literally just an organizational change, okay? Um, there's uh, you know, uniformity, continuity, governance, budgeting, taxation. Um, not in any the, either of these towns, but you would be surprised that some towns can get really dysfunctional. Villages even more so with respect to how they how they fire companies and fire departments are operated. This will keep it all uh, under the administration of five people whose only responsibility is is to make certain that you firefighters have what you need and the, the, the and that it's provided the service is provided <coughs> the most economical and efficient means. All the commissioners have to reside in the fire district. Okay, you're not going to get anybody from outside of the district coming in and levying taxes. So, they, you know, everybody has to get, and, that, and that's, you know, one of the better things. Everybody's going to be, you know, the people on that board are going to be uh, people that have to pay the taxes as well. Um, and, and ability to provide for long-range planning. This is probably the most boring, but the most important, uh, because the, 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 the Board of Fire Commissioners can project into the future, hey, we're going to need a new roof in 25 years, we need a new boiler in three years, we're going to need to replace that nice yellow engine out there with one that is more, you know, fits the platter kill color scheme, all right, um, in, in five years or whatever. So they can plan that, they can do, they can build their budget around it, and it's not so much living from hand to, hand to mouth like you do when you're a contract company. Uh, they have the ability under the law to establish reserve funds to actually save money, you know, the, the classic rainy day situation. Uh, why it's done, uh, the, the, this is the point I like the most. Uh, there's an established body of statutory and case law. It's, it's real easy when we have fire district questions. There's a long-standing body of law. Um, there's a couple of cases out there that happened with towns that, you know, when there was a liability on the fire department, towns didn't know they were on the hook for it. Okay, a firefighter makes a left-hand turn, you know, you hit somebody going to call. If they're in a fire protection district, that's the town's responsibility. If they're in a fire district, it's a fire district's responsibility. Uh, if something burns down and it shouldn't have, again, in a fire protection district, that's the town's responsibility, not the, not the fire department. So there's, a, that, that, there's that. It, it kind of lines things up the way you think they ought to be aligned. Um, provides a better method for budgeting and taxing. Um, yeah, the, the fire, Board of Fire Commissioners spend a couple, three months out of the year planning on the budget, you know, doing the budget, and figure out what the tax levy is going to be. Um, in year one, I can tell you, it's not going to be that much drastic. That would, there's not going to be a drastic change. It's not going to be that much different than it is this year in 2022. It won't be much different in 2021. It will cost more. I'm not going to lie to you. It will cost more because you're, you're creating a layer of government that needs to have uh, a photocopier, a computer, a secretary, and a treasurer. But those costs will yield dividends uh, in, a, in a different way. And I'll, I'll tell, tell you about that in a minute. Um, when the, the, the district is formed, the fire, this, this aspect of fire protection comes off the town's 2% dole, which is, oh, these people will be doing cartwheels out of here. Um, it's called a transfer of services. So right now, your fire protection contract is subject to their 2% limitation. It will now be subject to the Board of Fire Commissioners' 2% limitation. And that's an important thing because if, uh, you know, the town needs a new salter or a filtration plant or something, and you need a new fire engine, you're way down on the pecking order. Okay. Whereas with the fire district, you'll be you're the only you're the only priority they have. Um, you have to the district has to do annual reporting to the state controller. Um, that's required. Um, again, it's a financial uh, kind of a health statement. Um, annual audit if their revenues exceed three hundred thousand. We're nowhere near that right now. We're at one hundred twenty-five thousand nine hundred ninety dollars. We're not going to be approaching that mandatory audit level, but at some point. Uh, I would hope that board, no matter what their budget is, would secure the services of a, of a CPA to audit it. And again, there's no money ready. You, you can audit it easy right now. It's zero. But um, it's, it's not a bad practice to have. In fact, it's, a, it's the best practice. Uh, and annual budgets are subject to public hearing. Every October, um, typically the third Tuesday, but now with the, the, the outgoing governor just signed a law that changed that. So the third week in, in October, there will be a budget hearing. The Board of Fire Commissioners will have their proposed budget done in September. It'll be presented in the third week in uh, October, and it'll be open for public comment. You can come in and say, here's where, here's where the money's going, here's where it's spent. You don't have that now. There is a hearing with fire protection districts, but it's typically just the fire department going in and asking the, the town to approve the contract. 
Uh, how it's done. Okay, we're all moving along. Point number two. How it's done. Uh, resolution by the town board is to uh, conduct the hearing. We, that's been done. Conduct the public hearing. That's what we're here doing right now. And there's essentially three questions that each of these boards is going to have to answer. And they are, is the formation of a fire district in the public interest? Are all properties within the district boundaries benefited by the creation of the district? And are all properties that are benefited within the district's boundaries? Now, there's going to be an ancillary benefit that's outlined, you know, property owners. If you live on the line, obviously, you know, you're going to get a benefit from, you know, having plot or kill. But these are, these are the three questions. These are the three legal tests that have to be satisfied by these town boards uh, to uh, approve the establishment of a fire district. Okay, follow, uh, let's see. Let's click, okay, costs and benefits. Okay, tax levy is uniform across the district. Well, it, 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 sort, of, it, it sort of is now because the contract goes into both of the towns. But... When just just um, like with a school district, you'll see that this is the cost for fire protection. This is going to be the cost in each town because there's such disparate um, equalization, for lack of a better term, uh, in, um, in 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 the two towns. It's tough to do an apples to apples unless you do the equalization rate comparison. We've done that. Actually, that information is on file town hall, but. It, it will allow a more uniform um, levy of taxes for people across the town. You'll be able to, you'll have the tax rate for the fire district, you'll have the tax rate for what Princetown is, and it's probably in the $3 neighborhood because your assessment is about, your, 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 your uh, equalization rate's about a third of what Rotterdam's is. So uh, Rotterdam will be around a buck eight, buck ten, which is what it is now, um, uh, per thousand. Princetown's more only because your assessed valuation is a third. Uh, of what Ryder Dams is. Um, you know, governance is by the independently elected Board of Fire Commissioners. Again, similar to a school board. Uh, just like school boards have their own elections, so do fire districts. They will always be the second Tuesday in December. Uh, there's a whole statutory process that we have to go through. If you're interested in running, uh, we can help you out. Uh, commissioners are appointed initially, as I indicated, then they, they run and they at least have a five-year term after the first election. Um, commissioners are, are the only entity that has to go through mandatory training. This was a, a law that was uh, enacted in 2007, um, and basically to train them how to be commissioners uh, and, and cover all of the subject areas, the administrative areas. Uh, the board is trained in fire service administration. That's something a little bit different than the state mandated training. There's a whole lot of stuff out there that, that we as firefighters know that the AHJ needs to know. You know, when the chief goes in and says, "I need, you know, I need, I need bailout ropes, I need uh, SCBAs, I need to have fit tests, I need to have physicals." Um, if they went to the town for that, what are you talking about? What, you, Chief Handler, we don't, we, you know, this way the Board of Fire Commissioners was ultimately responsible for it, you know, basically amasses that information and knows the administrative, the, 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 the firematic uh, rules and regulations, not just the ones that the state requires for, for governance. And then uh, commissioners are not compensated. They, they know that there, there have been some pretty innovative ways to try and do that. They can't be provided health insurance. They don't get, uh, they don't get any stipends. Uh, and uh, you know they're, they're, it's it's a it's a free job just kind of like the the ones that the this board of education does. Okay, again, cost and benefits. The board becomes the authority having jurisdiction for all legal matters. The board would be responsible for all fiscal and liability matters, which I touched, touched upon briefly. Um, there's clear areas of delineation between the board and the fire department, um, and this is this is where we get into how it affects the fire department. Right now, you know, if, if there's going to be you're going to purchase a new fire truck, the, the the truck committee for the fire company has to not only figure out what they want for a truck, they have to figure out how they're going to pay for it, how they're going to go to the towns, so how they're going to be able to get money from both towns. You know, what, what are they going to? This is all done differently in a fire district. The board of fire commissioners are responsible for figuring out what you're going to get. It'll still be truck committees, but figure out how they're going to pay for it. And the board can, like any other municipality, issue bonds. Basically, issue uh, IOUs, get money, pay for the pay for the asset, and pay for pay it down over over time, pay over the. Uh, and bonding is the preferred way that the government, the, the state government, wants localities to, to borrow money. So it's a different. Um, it, it, it's, it's highly regulated. It's very. It's very stringent in what can and can't be done. And there's procedures that guarantee that there's not going to be any leakage, meaning there's not going to be anybody running off with your your tax money. Um, the board has the ability to develop comprehensive plans. As a firefighter, I like that because I know that that engine that I used to ride on. It's getting near, it's probably well past. It's more than 20 years old. Uh, I think it was built in 86, if I recall correctly. Uh, and, uh, you know, you get, it's a custom-built rig. There's not, there's not a hole in that rig that wasn't supposed to be there. But 
Um, the board can say, hey, you know, we're going to have to replace that one, that Reagan, that was an emergency fill, we're going to have to replace that in one year, two years, ten years. We need to, we need to have a capital plan for, you know, updating the firehouse, making certain that we meet all the OSHA requirements, um, the, the, um, and, and, you know, upgrading the, the air packs as needed. Uh, turnout gear is good for ten years, um, things like that. Um, but the comprehensive plan is, is probably, again, in my mind, it's the most important thing the board does. Uh, they have the ability to issue bonds, I mentioned that recently. Uh, residents will have representation. Um, right now, if you don't like uh, what you're paying for fire tax, you can go to the town board and it, you know, I'm sure they'll be very sympathetic to you, but they probably don't know what it is the money's going for either. There's a budget, there was a contract. Now you'll have five people whose only job it is to know why, the, why you, your taxes are this amount of money and how much, how much is going towards this, that, or the other thing. Um, you know, how much is going for equipment, how much is going for apparatus, how much is going for maintenance in the firehouse, um, things, of that, things of that order. I apologize for whipping through here. If anybody has a question, I'll be taking them shortly. Uh, impact on the community. Um, yeah, uh, it's, it's going to cost about what it's costing you now. It's going to cost you more. It's going to cost you more in the future than it does now. That's, I, I, that's all I can tell you. Um, board, the boards of fire commissioners tend to be very fiscally uh, conservative because they end up paying as well. But there is going to be a bump. There's going to be an administrative uh, cost that you have to pay for in the, in the first couple of years just to get the, the district up and running, to have a professional, uh, to have a treasurer, to have secretary, to have all of the trappings of, of, of the, that the government requires, that the state government requires, that local governments have. But those things all reap a benefit. Um, I'm sure if you asked each of these town clerks what they do uh, every day, you'd be amazed. Same thing with the fire district secretary. Uh, same thing with town control, or same thing with the, with the, with the district treasurer. So uh, very important jobs. Uh, those jobs are compensated. Uh, typically are compensated. Um, uh, they should be compensated. Impact on the fire department. This is... Um, this is where I can speak from my own knowledge. I've only been in fire districts. I, I grew up in Western New York, or started out in Western New York, moved to Rotterdam and didn't want to move away. So uh, when, I, when I came to Albany to go to law school. But um, there aren't a lot of districts out there, so I'm, I'm familiar with the relationship. And, and I, as you know, being a fire company, there's a lot of stuff you do. There's a lot of volunteer time you do. And then on top of that, running the calls. And then, oh, by the way, we have to have a meeting tonight because we have to we have to review the contract for the upcoming negotiation with the towns. For it, okay, there's not enough time in your day to do this. All right, there's not enough time to train and be a firefighter and do all do all the things that have to be done, and then have essentially run a business on the side because that's what the fire service is. You're running a business. So now what happens is you'll have five people who will have to make time in their lives and, and a lot of time in the next few months. Uh, but they're going to they're run the business for you, and they're going to provide you with what you need to do. So that's going to be a big lift off of the shoulders of the board of directors, the officers, the civil officers of the fire company, because all of the buying of the stuff that you need isn't that their obligation anymore. And primarily off the chief and the chief officers, because they will report to the board. They'll go in with, hey, you know, the board, I need this. The, the chief actually works for the board, is, is, is obligated to implement the board's directives. Uh, kind of like the military is with the president. So the chief runs the fire department, but the board sets the policy and, and, and sets the tenor for how things are going to happen. Um, you're not going to get a check every year. So you're, you're, the way you maintain your, your do your fundraising is going to change, probably. Um, uh, obviously, in that check, you're spending most of that money for firematic things. Um, so it means that for the fire company to maintain its, its own resources, it, it'll need to do fundraising or, or, or different means of fundraising, just like every other charitable entity does. The nice thing is you're not buying fire trucks with it. You're not paying for fuel with it. You're not paying the electric bill for it. Um, uh, eventually, there will probably be an agreement for the you know use of the firehouse and whatnot. All things that have to be ironed out, but that's typically what happens because the fire company owns everything right now. Um, I would imagine most of the assets, at least the, the rolling stock and all the equipment will be turned over to the fire district. Those. But those apparatus, they look nice, but they're not any different than horses. You have to feed them and clean up after them, okay? And it becomes a very expensive proposition. So, uh, not to slight anybody, but my feeling is that the people that don't get out of bed at 3 in the morning ought to be paying as well as me. So, um, And then uh, the savings, you know, and again, this is the big one. It's to the firefighters in their, in their time and their hours. Um, I would much rather spend, you know, three or three hours or eight hours, you know, training 
than I would eight hours in a meeting doing budgeting and planning and or flipping chickens or pancakes because we got to buy you know two new tires for the apparatus and that kind of stuff has to be, does go on. Okay, here's the protection contracts right now. Uh, quick math in my head: 125,990 was the total contract amount. Um, I expect that's going to stay the same. This is this is where I, 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 I'm technologically challenged, but I managed to get this all together. So this is a, a copy of a statement that's on file with each of the towns using the assessed values from um, both towns um, this year. Um, and uh, the red is, I've just added, the, the, the final assessment rules for 2021 were just completed. Those are the red numbers. So, um, and what this, what, and this is significant. Over here in the left-hand column is the, is the contract amount. The rest of this stuff is the property assessment. Now go to the far right-hand column. There's 257 properties in Rotterdam, 412 properties in Princetown that comprise this protection district. They will, those same properties will comprise the fire protection district. So you've got 669 properties that are going to be paying taxes to support the fire district. They already pay the taxes now. Um, the, the reason that's significant, the, 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 the uh, ad valorem very significant is because when the fire district is going to prepare its budget, it's going to look at what the total value of the property is and roughly, and not, I don't want to bore anybody further than I have to, but roughly they can tax approximately $1,000 for every million. So uh, there's $121 million right now. Uh, they're going to be able to levy about $120 $1,000, and then, wait a minute, that's $4,000, that's $5,000 less than what they're levying now. Yes, they're going to have to do a, ask for permission to lift that, but um, we're going to be at right about the same amount, and that's, that, that 121 limit, that, that limitation on what they can levy is geared towards the property value. So you can't, can't ever go above it unless you ask the citizens for permission to do that. Uh, expectation, uh, again, this, the tax level will remain about the same, although there will likely be an increase and expenses. Okay, I'm telling you, I wrote that. There will be an increase. There has to be an increase because we got to pay for this to get this other thing off the ground. Um, and then the charges for that are, are become charges in the district. The district becomes obligated to pay all of the expenses uh, going forward. Questions? That's me. And that's my law office. It was the original firehouse in the town in the town of Bethlehem, in Delmar. That's what it is now. So I thought that was kind of a neat thing. But and no, I'm not in the picture. You're all of us, but I'm not. <laughs> Diane, did anybody sign up on the list to speak? I was just going to grab that. Yes. yes. I share, but not not during COVID. <laughs> So I'm not sure if everybody was here when I said if you wanted to speak, you had to sign up. And I just, there's just one on here, Dan Brutus. Is there anyone else that wanted to speak? I, I don't have much to add. Terry's done an excellent job of going through the process and the pros and the cons. And I just happy to see both towns here. And we're looking forward, I think, as a fire district, uh, the ability to do long-term planning is really important to us. Um, trucks. We're on a 20 to 30 year turnover cycle. And so, you know, we're looking out, we're going to start saving when we get a new truck for the next truck that we're going to get in 20 years. And so I think that's a different timeline than maybe the towns are looking at um, when, they're, when they're budgeting. So I think that's going to be real helpful for us to be able to start uh, savings accounts to take care of those things. Uh, when I started 25 years ago, we just put a brand new roof on it. That was 25 years ago. So now it's time to start looking at, you know, it's not leaking, well that's good. Uh, but that's that's the kind of long-term stuff that I think is going to be more beneficial to the fire. Other than that, I don't know what to say. Okay. I have a question. Sure. It's not going to affect their ability to have their annual Christmas party, right? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> or their invitation of me to go. <laughs> Any other questions on tonight's public hearing? Any other comments on tonight's public hearing? All I got to say is I carried the flat when you built the <laughs> Ask Warren Gifford. Wow. <laughs> and I was about 10, 12 years old. Uh, yes, our uh, town of Princeton has certainly been very supportive of, of uh, Plotterkill over the years. 
and to be quite honest with you, uh, I know nothing about running a fire department. So when the board of directors of Plotterkill asked to become a commission district, the general consensus of our town is that we're very supportive of it. And like I said, I know nothing about running a fire department. I can drive the truck because I've been in the trucking industry for 52 years, but I cannot. I don't know any of the equipment that's on it. I don't have a clue. It's all I know about fighting a fire is if you have a, a fire, you throw water on it. If it's a chemical fire, I don't know what to do. I call 911 <laughs> and the fire department shows up. Or if I have a medical emergency, which I had at one time, the EMTs or the paramedics show up. It's usually from the fire department. And I do thank, and our town thanks all of the volunteers in Plyer Kill for their dedication and service. I think the town of Rotterdam sits in the same position as our friends in Princeton. And again, on behalf of the town of Rotterdam, thank you, all of you, for your service because it takes each and every one of you to make it work. And as uh, Terry said, you know, those of us who don't have the, uh, don't, don't, you know, don't have to get up at three in the morning, you know, there's 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 an obligation to the community that uh, that I think this is a great move and a long time overdue, if nothing else. So again, hearing no other. Uh, yeah, one, yeah, one more yes, quick comment. One more quick comment. Uh, my degrees are in risk management. One of the fundamental things we learned first is always transfer risk when you can. So for me, transferring risk from the town to the district—that's all I got to hear, no and way. I'm in. Okay, just gonna ask three more times officially, like we do at our town meetings. Any other comments on the public hearing? Any other comments on the public hearing? Any other comments? All right, from the Rotterdam side, we declare the public hearing closed. Uh, any other comments? Uh, Cole, Doug, Jen? I have no further comments. Uh, is there a motion to close the meeting? The public hearing? Yeah. Yeah, I'll make the motion. I'll second. second. Uh, Diane, would you like to? Um, Evan Christel made the motion. I didn't hear who seconded. Jim? Jim? So, Mr. Christo, to 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 to, uh, uh, to close the uh, the to public hearing, yes. Okay. Public, 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 public hearing, yes. Hearing, okay. Yes. yes. Mr. Gitarelli? yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera, yes. And Mr. Signore, yes. Oh, yes. Sandy, could you read the Councilman Pavoldi? Yes. Council Member Gray, yes. Council Member Mora, yes. Supervisor Esposito, yes. Public hearing is closed. Oh, public hearing is closed. Any other business? No. Right. No. Thank you, everybody. And again, thank you for your service. Thank you very much. We appreciate your all coming.